Well, it's good to go to the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Just like the other three or four times I preached, I'm pretty calm and collective up here. Amen. Well, I had three or four sermons. I even told Brother Billy I had one a few days ago, and I did. I like the way it sounded. Yeah. But guess what? I need to watch the one song. So. Amen. I've been I've been going through a lot lately with a lot of stuff. I'm sure Diana can tell you every one of them because she's the one that cares about them. And I've I've fought some some pretty bad mind games in my life, Brother Billy, if you want to know. But for some reason, the past two weeks they've been a lot harder than I've ever been through. Yeah. And it's been tough. Because it takes its toll, especially when you're a newlywed. And the devil's been trying to, to come in between Diana because he made her crazy and read her Bible, and that's something I've never known with previous relationships. Yeah. And the Lord has showed me stuff about her, and I've told her what I've saw, and the devil's been fighting us ever since then. But people, it's trying to come between us too, and it's been tough to deal with all that. So I begin to pray, Lord, what should I preach? Because I, I ain't this big preacher up here that's going to spit on anybody. You know, I ain't graduated to the spitting class yet. Brother Billy's got that one down pretty good, and I hope to get to that class soon. But what can I tell people, you know? Because to me, when you preach behind Brother Billy, to me, I'm preaching behind the greatest preacher I've ever heard. It's an influence of life. Amen. So, so, so God, what do you want me to preach? To reach your people, what, what do you want me to say? And he told me to start telling, telling people where I've come from and what I have today. Everybody pretty much knows I've been to jail. And most people know why. No, I mean, I'm not going to sit up here and talk about that part of it because it's, it doesn't really matter why. You know, Johnny, when, Jonah, when he went to the belly of the well, he said that was hell to him. Yeah. Jail was hell to me. There's no way that I can sit up here to scrub what, what that done to me. But I, I can sit up here and tell you that I got something out of jail that I don't know if I would have got anywhere else. Because Brother Billy taught me for years, or he tried to, that you can't go by the way you feel. You got to get rid of the way you feel. And all the times I went to Brother Hinton's, I would be in church for a while, I felt the spirit. While I was feeling it, I was, I was good. But when I didn't feel it, I, I left church every time. And God taught me in jail, trust my word. Amen. And that's what I've done since then, and thank God. And, I've been a pretty faithful member since then. I consider myself a faithful member. And I know y'all do too because you seem to hear. But I I went through fear in jail that I never I never known existed until I went to jail. You know, there, to me there's stages of fear. Because you fear things more than you fear others. So there has to be cycles you can go up. Just like there's stages of hell. You know, the depths of hell. But when I was in there, I just remember him and asking God several times, why have you forsaken me? You know, because I, I didn't hear no, I guess because I was wanting out so bad. I was waiting for the big the big miracle. And that's what we do a lot of times. We look for the big miracle and we miss every little thing God has laid down before us. Amen. I've missed several just like that. But I, I just remember being in there in a place of... Uh, torment to me because in jail there's no peace. There's no quiet. The ones who talk to me on the phone know that very well. But Sister Lynn Sims, is that, did I say that right? Sent me a letter and told me that, that I never said a word to her, you know, don't say God's forsaken you any longer. 
And from that moment, you know, I knew he was with me. Amen. I didn't feel him. I still felt the wall. But I started trusting his word. Yeah. I started reading the word and believing everything Brother Bill had taught me all the years, everything Brother Hinton had taught when I was there. And you can't go by how you feel. If you go, if I went how I felt, I'd never be here. I don't ever feel like coming to church. I could find an excuse in the book too if, if I felt good, but I have it. I have to come to church. There ain't nothing any us that would do for me. I have to come to church and do what God wants me to do. And there's some people, and I can give you some names if it was spiritually correct, but you don't have to give names. God knows who they are. That's judging me from a past that's not right for them to judge me about. They, they ain't nobody that has to say a word to me to remember my past. When I looked in the mirror, I said, And I battled that for a long time. Until God told me one day, it's time to let the past go. I can't change it. I can stay off the roads that take me to the path that I was on. But he says, he, he's told me many times to let me worry about the ones that's judging you for what you've done. And he always brings, you know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. He's always bringing that scripture to my mind. It's not our place to give people the punishment. If it was, we'd all probably be on our way to hell because we'd probably zap one. You know, you know how we think sometimes. And I've been mad. I've been mad. I've been mad today. Frustrated. And the devil knows that, that he feeds that. When you've when you got a problem, you know, he's going to bring 10,000 devils. He ain't coming alone. And never been able to tax your mind. And me and, me and Diane has been trying to make it. I mean, and every prayer we have prayed so far, all but one of them has come true. We're waiting on one more. And it's a big one. But I know from reading this word what God can do when, when it comes to big miracles. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen, you know, but I know God's going to move for us what we need. Yeah. I've felt that up a long time that the devil's tried to steal what I feel away. But the Lord's always reminding me, you know, go by my word. What does my word say? And I have to hold on to the word because without the word, you don't have nothing. Amen. Without the word, we might as well be at home. Because the word's going to get us out of here. I'm a, I got a couple scriptures. I, I didn't really have a, a lot. I didn't know what I was going to preach. And then the Lord just started telling me to tell people where you come from, what I've done, what I've learned in there from my past to where I am today. And today, I feel like I have a, I have a, a true relationship with the Lord that I've never known. All the times that I felt lonely, He always showed up on time. Yeah. The Lord's never too early and He's never too late. Yeah. He's Amen. always on time. Amen. And I tell Diane all the time, I said, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I know what the Lord's told me. Yeah. And even though it ain't happened yet, I know it's coming. Because His Word says it. That ain't just what He's told me, but His Word Amen. speaks to it. Most of y'all probably quote the scripture, Isaiah 41 and 10. paper home or wrote down what all the Lord has done for us. It'd be a pretty long, a pretty long tablet, wouldn't it? Amen. 
It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now the devil, there's one thing he likes to do, is to bring fear upon anybody's mind. And he don't just bring one problem. He'll bring a problem, for example, when I was talking about this last night, if you got a bill that's due, and you ain't got no money, you're wearing, the first thing that hits your mind is, how am I going to pay this? What am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to have to take out next month. And pretty soon, instead of that one problem, we've got ten wrapped there automatically. Yeah. And the devil feeds on that. Because he comes to you with more than one problem. And that's his job, is to put fear in your minds. And for some reason, for a long time, he's, he's tormented my mind. That God has taught me. And then, and I, we've been praying every night for God, you know, put the, put the blood over the line and to fight the devil. Because the blood, the devil can't get through the blood unless we allow it. Amen. Whatever happens, the devil can't touch the blood. Amen. And one thing that I'm still learning, even though I've been around, you know, church most of my life, is you still got to plead the blood up over your mind and you still have to fight daily. This stuff just never goes away. God can help you through it. Understandably, He can do that. Yeah. But we're living in the last days. We're expecting the Lord to come any hour. Amen. So the things is not going to get any easier. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. And the main thing is to keep your mind on the Lord. And don't give in to the devil. Yeah. At some point in time, we've all done that, but... We shouldn't be doing that now, obviously, but we just have to keep fighting. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience what I've been going through. And I go through a lot of changes, and as most of you pretty much know. I have to keep praying and reminding myself of what does the Word say. Amen. What do you feel in your heart? Sometimes the mind gets you in trouble. Yeah. What do you feel in your heart? A mind's a powerful tool. Might get you to believe a lot of things ain't true. Amen. 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 Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Now that right there tells you that the Lord's going to be right there with you holding your hand. Whatever kind of fear you go through, the Lord's going to be there. When I was in jail, the Lord was holding my hand. As you well know, when you look at the, it's the footprints, you know, when you saw the set of footprints and only saw one set, it was then I was carrying you. And I believe that's what the Lord did for me in there. I just didn't realize it at first. Yeah. But I got to tell people about Jesus in there. It's, and I, I prayed, I planned to see, but some of them, you, you don't know. I hope one of them, just one of them, got something. And there was people in there that taught me something on the other side of it. And sometimes that happened. So sometimes people talk about that stuff and they don't realize what they've got because they've lived a sinner's life all their life. But yet, what they need, they already got. They just have to accept the Lord. There's a lot of good people out there. The only thing they're lacking is asking the Lord to come in their life. There's a lot of good people in hell. Amen. And that's sad. But that's the way it is. But there's always, I should be up testifying every service. Because I, when I thank God for my freedom, I mean it in a lot of ways. It's a blessing to be here. Because I know where I've come from. Amen. And I never forget where I've been, and I don't want to because it's a reminder of what God's done for me. Amen. I don't ever want to go back. But I wouldn't trade it for nothing for what I got now. Because he's taught me a lesson that I needed. And I ain't, that wasn't God's will for me to go that route in life, and I know that. But he really already hit the scripture. God works all things out for your good. Amen. He does it every time. And that's the, I can never apologize for that. Yeah. Because I got something I needed a long, for a long time when I was in there. People's going to judge 
me for the rest of my life, Brother Billy. Yeah. I hear it all the time. But I've got to learn to pray for them in a loving way instead of getting mad, bitter. Because God wants us to pray for those, you know, that, that do that to us. Yeah. It's our job for God to touch them. You know, we need to pray for God to touch their hearts and their, mind, and their minds. Because people can influence other people, and that's what happens. And they get to believe in one thing and another thing, and pretty soon it's just a chain. Yeah. But he, and even though they're Christians, uh, that, that doesn't mean they're going to hell. I don't ever mean that. Sometimes Christians are blind. You get blind by certain things, you don't see it. So we just need to pray. Pray for, pray for me every day. You know, I, I consider myself a Christian, and I need prayer every day on something. Just because I've not done some of the stuff that's been done to me, I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing in another area. So we all do it. Yeah. So that's we need to pray for one another. Amen. If, I guess if I had to title this sermon, it would be Fear Thou Not. But I, the Lord has told me many times lately to start telling people and being thankful for where you come from and where you are today. Because I'm, I'm one blessed man and I feel that in my heart. A lot of times I feel like I should have been dead, you know, all the pills I was on at the time and what I've done. But God had a plan for me and I was joking around with my wife earlier and told her it's probably the final sermon I preach. And God told me tonight and it will not be so I guess that was a joke, huh? Amen. But the devil, the devil don't want me preaching. And he hasn't wanted it for many years. But I gotta do it, Brother Billy, because I feel in my heart that's what he's wanted for a long time. But I have to get to be, to be to a certain place in my spiritual walk before I can do it. Yeah. I thank God for a conscience that I can get up here and preach when I live like the devil. Amen. And I, and I don't ever want to be that way. I always want God to be the one that lets me know what I need to do to be up here. I know it wasn't big and powerful as some of the bellies, but that's what the Lord wanted, so let's give a hand for His word. Amen. Amen.